This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to worship at Bethlehem Lutheran Church. It's Palm Sunday, it's Passion Sunday, all together. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the Son of David. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Mercifully assist us, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life everlasting through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Together, amen. Hear now the Gospel of Matthew from the 21st, from the 21st chapter. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The, disciple went, the disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds went ahead of him, and all say all that followed were shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna to the son of David. The son of David. Blessed, Blessed is the one. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The Lord. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Hosanna, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus of Nazareth in Galilee. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We praise and thank you, O God, for the great acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. On this day, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was acclaimed Son of David and King of Kings by those who scattered their garments and branches of palms in his past. We ask that you bless these, our branches, and those who bear them, and grant that we may ever hail him as our Lord and King, and follow him with perfect confidence through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us go forward in peace. In the name of the Lord.
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Are there children who would like to come forward for the children's sermon? Are there children who would like to come forward? Are you there? Did you come? Are you there? Are you there? I'm, re I'm really glad that you're here with me today. I'm really glad that you're here with me today. Today is, a, today is a very special day for all of us. And I'm glad that, that even though you're not exactly where I am, we are close enough that we can talk and pray with each other. <sighs> well, it's a special day. Do you know what the, word, the special word for this day is? Do, do any of you know what the special word is? It's, it, it goes along with the palm branch. You wave the palm branch. You wave it, and you say, maybe, maybe somebody with you knows the word that you say when you wave the palm branch. You say, Hosanna, Hosanna. And, and the people did this when Jesus was coming into town. It was a big parade. It was bigger than any parade you've ever seen. And Jesus was coming into town in this big parade and everybody would say, Hosanna, Hosanna. And they were cheering for him and, and they were just so happy that he was in their city in Jerusalem. They were just so happy to be there. Have you ever been to a parade or around a big crowd of people and they were all cheering and yelling? You know how exciting that is. You know how exciting. Did you, do you know, did you hear anybody say, Hosanna, Hosanna? No? No, you didn't, you didn't hear anybody say Hosanna? Maybe you heard them say, um, Go Cubs! But, uh, maybe not. Maybe you heard them say, Go Giants! Or Go Raiders! Or Go Niners! Or Go A's! Or, or maybe... Maybe you heard them say, we're number one, we're number one. <laughs> well, I, Cause that's, we root that a lot, don't we? We cheer for that a lot, yeah. Well, I want you to think about this for a minute because as hard as we cheer, the people that were cheering for Jesus were saying something a little bit different. When they were saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, they were speaking a Hebrew phrase. You might have heard me say it. It comes from this psalm, this psalm 118, and it's just a few lines past. This is the day the Lord has made. The, the phrase Hosanna, Hosanna says, and what it, what it means is, Oh God, save us. We really need you to save us. They were saying, Hosanna, Hosanna. Oh, God, save us. We really need you to save us. Isn't that amazing? That people were cheering like God had already saved them because they had the confidence already because God had saved them so many times before. They knew their whole history. They were all in Jerusalem to celebrate part of the story about how God had saved them. And they were saying, God, save us, as a way of cheering for God. Will you pray with me so we can remember God and cheer for God too? Are you ready? Dear God, dear God, thanks for your love. Thanks for your love. You're all the time, you're all the time, no matter what, no matter what. Go anywhere, go anywhere, or stay at home, or stay at home. Whatever's necessary, whatever's necessary, love, love. Help us learn that we can always count on you, that we can always count on you to be a saving God, to be a saving God. Be Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna.
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And all of God's children said, Amen. Thank you very much for coming up and helping me start this day. Imagine, if you will, a city with gates on opposite sides. And from all, all of the countryside, pilgrims are coming into the city to celebrate, to celebrate their release from captivity. God has delivered them from slavery. This city is Jerusalem. The slavery was in Egypt. And the exodus is being celebrated at Passover. But the same people who are experiencing this joyous celebration are also experiencing the oppression of a mighty, a mighty nation. Since so many people are coming to the city, the mighty nation sends its army into the city to keep the peace. Imagine a legion of soldiers marching in with their war horses, their chariots, their shields, their swords, their spears, coming into the city for what they call a peaceful time. Now imagine, or just remember, the march we had into this place. The entrance on the other side of the city. On the other side of the city where the people were shouting. And who is coming in? Well, someone riding on a donkey. The people around him who knew him so very well, the ones who have been following him, are shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. As they approach, as they get closer to the city, he comes not with a power of shield and sword, not with war horses, but he comes with faithfulness and faithful disciples and people inspired to hope, to hope that God is doing again God's saving work. The very word Hosanna, meaning save us, Lord, we beseech thee, and God has been so consistent in that saving that now he is sending one whose name means God saves, whose name is Jesus. Who is he? The people inside the city ask. And the people who are traveling with him reply, this is the one. This is the prophet, Jesus of Nazareth. What will happen when these two forces meet? What will happen when these two powers collide? Listen carefully as we read the story. Because in the story there will be many who you would figure would remain faithful and steadfast in this collision of power. There will be others that you would never count on. There will be some who betray and deny. And yet, there will be unfamiliar names. People we don't really 
remember or recognize prior to this part of the story. But God is being faithful. Let us listen carefully to how our hosannas will bring us together with God. The Lord be with you and also with you. We pray, O God of mercy and might, in the mystery of the passion of your Son, you offer your infinite life to the world. Gather us around the cross of Christ and preserve us until the resurrection through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now before us, the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 26th and 27th chapters. One of, the one of the disciples, one of the 12 who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and said, What will you give me if I betray him to you? They paid him 30 pieces of silver. And from that moment, he began to look for an opportunity to betray Jesus. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, Where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? Jesus said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, the teacher says, my time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve while they were eating. He said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to Jesus one after another, Surely not I, Lord. Jesus answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one to not, not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new with you in my heavenly Father's kingdom. The gospel continues. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters because of me this night. For it is written, 
I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to Peter, Really, I tell you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Here, while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little further, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So, could you not stay awake with me for one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away for the second time and prayed. My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived with him. One of the twelve arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi. And kissed him. Jesus said to him, And do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. You think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels. But how then would the scriptures be filled, which say it must happen in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted Jesus and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest, and was going inside. He sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so that they might put him to death, but they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last two came forward and said, This fellow this said, fellow said I, am I am able to destroy the temple of God, temple of God and, and, and to build, build, build it in three days. Three days. The high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. 
Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so, but I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? They answered, He deserves, he deserves death. death. Then they spat in his face and struck him, and some slapped him, saying, Prophesy, Prophesy to us, Messiah. Messiah. Who is it that struck you? struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, Peter denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly. Certainly, you are one of them. For your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse and swore an oath. I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. When Peter remembered what Jesus had said, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders, and he said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But they said, what is that? Is that, is that to us? See, See it yourself. For yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priest, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not it is put them into the treasury. treasury since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to very foreigners. For this reason, the, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had spo been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah, and they took 30 pieces of silver, the price of the one in whom a price has been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price and they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave them no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner from the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Jesus Barabbas? or Jesus, who is called the Messiah. For Pilate realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed Jesus over to him. While Jesus was sitting on the judgment seat, while Pilate was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him. I have nothing to do with that innocent man, but today I have suffered a great deal because of the dream about him. 
Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, let, Let him be crucified. Then he said, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let, Let him, him be crucified. crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and our children. So Pilate released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governors took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around Jesus. They stripped him and they put a scarlet robe on him. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, Hail. King of the Jews. They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head, they put large charges against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, you. you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking Jesus, saying, He, he saved, saved others. others. He cannot, he cannot save, save himself. He is the King of Israel. King of Israel. Let him, Let come, him down come down from the cross from the now, and we will, believe, we will in believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to, for he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice. Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This, this, this man, man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a stick and gave it to Jesus to drink. But others said, wait, wait, let, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again and with a loud voice breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. 
After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what had taken place, they were terrified and said, Truly this man was God's son. Many women were also there looking on from a distance. They followed Jesus from Galilee and had provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and Mary, the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered the body to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, Sir we remember what that what imposter, what the imposter said, said while he was still alive. After, After three, three days, I will rise again. Therefore, Therefore, command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, Otherwise, his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people he has been raised from the dead. And the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, you have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be, Thanks to, God. be to God. Did you see those powers, those forces colliding? Did you see the characters holding fast in faithfulness? While disciples fell away, other followers, not named disciples or barely mentioned before disciples, rose up to be at the instrument of death from that powerful force, rose up to be witnesses to the death. They will carry that witness with them. Others stood forward. Did you hear Joseph of Arimathea? Did you hear Pilate's wife? Others stood forward with a witness, a witness for the sake for the sake of what God might be doing. And still, it won't be clear. We might need to reach back to, to that word that we had just a little bit ago in order to remember the people that we are, people who will hang on when there seems no reason to hang on, People who will nourish their faithfulness when it seems even nourished, we are unable to do what needs to be done. God remains busy in the world. We might need to be able to take, to take a little bit of time to be quiet, to be still, to be in our place, remind ourselves of our faith while we wait to see what God will be doing.
Let us confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scripture. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. It is at this time we share the peace with one another. So if you are sheltered in place, um, please share the peace with someone that you are with, with everyone that you are with. And, well, say out loud the name of two people that you will be in touch with shortly, today, tomorrow, and offer to them the peace of the Lord. We continue our worship with the gifts of our first fruits and our other free will offerings. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with your free spirit. Turning our hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful, we pray for God's church, the world, and all in need. God of your church, you have seen the forms that your people and your church have taken in every age and every place. Inspire us that we may remain faithful in all our expressions, this day and in all the days you provide. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of all history, your redeeming power is still shaping our understanding of your love for all peoples. Form our hearts in the plight of common affliction that we might abandon our opposing powers and join in your love for all the world. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God breaking into the world, as we shout hosannas to your salvation, 
and now hearken to your son's passion, let us with ears to hear, minds to listen, and hearts to act. Let us see your divine faithfulness moving into our human circumstance. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of life, bless all throughout the world who struggle, suffer, and serve during this epidemic. For all who live alone, inspire us to reach out, to call them. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. For all who travel to return home, grant safe passage. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. For all who travel to meet the crisis, bestow courage, inspire our gratitude. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. For all who work for the things we must have, sustain diligence. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. For all who heal, heal and care for all the sick, strengthen them to endure and feed their knowledge. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. For all who make decisions on our behalf, bestow wisdom. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. For all public health officials and all who watch over us, awaken servant leadership. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. For each of us, in all our human interactions, bestow understanding. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. In the face of forces that seem to overwhelm us, provide faith, trust, patience, courage, endurance, character, faithfulness, and hope. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Healing God, send your presence upon all who need your healing touch in spirit, mind, or body. Ed, Robin, Elaine, Dixie, Janet, Wendy, Brianna, Sue, Linda, Tom, Steve, Donald, Wyatt, Terry, Judy, Paul, Martin, Elsie, Liz, Angie, Richard, Joanne, Darcy, Greg, Jesse, and others we name aloud or in our hearts. Give us courage to be in touch with all who suffer that together we may share our burdens. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of life, as we fast from your table gathered here, stir our memory of your unity with us, your nourishment, your house, your gifts, your word, your people, your promise, your world, your glory. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of life, you are the resurrection. We remember those who have died and we trust to you their eternal life. Bring their faithful witness together with your promise that our living in these days would be the life 
that is life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. According to your steadfast love, O God, hear these and all our prayers as we commend them to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our benediction is an early church hymn, and from our midweek Lenten series, recorded in Philippians, the second chapter, beginning with verse 5. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, and being born in human likeness and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Heavenly Father. Let us go forth in peace. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me.